Good evening, friends. This is Rahul here uh, uh, as a Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consulting LLP. And today we would be covering a video which is uh, on valuation adjustment, which is on funding valuation, funding valuation adjustment, shortly known as FVA. As we already understand that uh, valuation adjustment are playing a very important role nowadays. Uh, in fact, adjustments are playing a very, uh, very important role nowadays. Basel 3 uh, has added number of adjustment. Example, CVA, which is credit value adjustment, DVA, debit value adjustment, MBA, marginal value adjustment, KVA, capital value adjustment, COLSA, which is collateralized, uh, uh, COLVA, uh, which is COLVA, which is collateralized valuation adjustment, and FVA, which is funding value adjustment. But today we are going to be specific speaking on this, which is funding value adjustment. I can see that and this is my personal assumption that by that by 2018 when Basel 3 will will applicable for majority of the banks across the globe and in fact Indian banks will also move towards Basel 3 then these values valuation adjustment will, will play a very important role and I hope you saw our video whereby we mentioned that IFRS 9 is getting integrated with Basel 3 because of that perfect integration and the perfect matching uh, these adjustments will play a very important role. Here why we are taking an example of a treasury uh, of a bank. Let's assume that the bank name is uh, UBS, United Bank of Switzerland. Now UBS is having a client who is having uncollateralized, who is uncollateralized counterparty. Please don't consider that into uh, that into e e equation. Now assuming the name of the client is Microsoft. So Microsoft is an uncollateralized counterparty who is a client of the UBS. Now UBS cannot say no to by Microsoft because this is the number one software company of the globe. At the same time, since Microsoft is the number one software company of the globe, so they love to be uncollateralized rather than collateralized. Now what is the difference between collateralized and uncollateralized? The difference is that there are two ways. Let me speak from an Indian perspective. In an Indian perspective, collateralization means that companies will pledge something to the banks and generally this pledging, pledging is in the form of the term deposit. Sometimes I have seen the form of the equity share also, sometimes the promoter funding also, but that is very rare. Majority pledging I have saw in the form of term deposit, either long term term deposit or rolling term deposit. But since uh, India is a very small market for uh, derivative and it is not very matured market, neither any steps which are going on in that direction. If we compare like the take example which we are taking wherein we are comparing UBS with Microsoft. Here Microsoft is taking care of any kind of derivative instrument and that derivative instrument is supported by an agreement which is ISDA. ISDA stands for International Swap and Derivative Association. I already told number of times that ISDA is having four documentation. One is ISDA 2002 Master Service Agreement, which cannot be amended. If you need to amend, you need to sign another document, which is annexure. Third is RDS, which is Risk Disclosure Statement. And fourth is CSX. CSX stands for Credit Support, Credit Support Annex. Some people will refer this as CSA also. Now there is a haircut provision in the CSI. There are multiple ways CS, CSX can be designed. Multiple ways CSS can be designed. And one of the ways CSS can be designed is that Microsoft will uh, pledge some deposits to UBS and, and these deposits will continue to earn interest and they will continue to be in an escrow account. So in case of any any anything would happen, example the mark to market will go high, example the collateralization failed, example there is a credit risk event which we are having, example Microsoft is facing CVA, credit, uh, which is credit valuation adjustment or UBS facing the mirror image of the CVA which is debit valuation adjustment, this escrow will invoke or Microsoft is coming and cancelling the contract because of the cancellation of the contract. UBS is ending up with a big losses. So they will uh, invoke that contract and UBS will get benefit out of that. But generally such things do not happen because people like Microsoft do not sign CSX. Although there are few IT companies to be know they sign CSX. That is why I told you that for a minute we should exclude this. Now what is going to happen that this uncollateralized uh, counterparty is in touch with the business unit of a bank which we assume UBS. Assuming they are in touch with Jurich, Jurich business unit and Jurich business unit is in touch with the bank treasury which is a UBS bank treasury 
since UBS is a big bank, they have multiple treasuries. Example, there is a one treasury which is sitting in India, which is taking care of the Asia Pacific market. They have a dedicated treasury in Singapore, they have in US, they have in Europe. In fact, it's predominantly a Swiss based bank, so they have a very good command in the in European financial market. So this would be in touch with the treasury. Here we assume that they are in touch with the group treasury. Who is taking who is who is taking care of the group treasury uh, or who is having the authority to decide about the group treasury? Now this bank treasury will further be in the touch with the markets. That markets could be interbank also. Example, how interbank? They are they are touched with the interbank. Example, City, Bank of America, JP Morgan, say uh, Standard Chartered Bank, HSBC, Deutsche Bank, and other. So either it could be a funding market or either either it could be an interbank market. So it is both. It depends. Now these interbank markets are giving funding to uh, this bank, which bank in turn give to the business unit, and business unit will take this funding into consideration because they are ending up in an uncollateralized uh, either either a derivative or it could be a loan also. So all those people who are watching our videos, don't be surprised if it could be an uncollectorized loan also. Generally, loans never be uncollectorized, but there are certain instances when we saw that also. Right? So predominantly derivatives like big companies are always trading a big amount of derivatives and majority of them are uncollectorized derivatives. Right? Now, there is an issue. Rather than, uh, there are two ways. This bank treasury, rather than interacting with the interbank, this bank treasury will interact with the subsidiary interbank. Who is subsidiary interbank? Very easy. UBS Singapore, UBS uh, Europe, you know, UBS US, UBS India and other. So they would interact with subsidiary interbank. And these subsidiary interbank, if they will see the valuation adjustment which they need to need to have, because for them, this is a CVA and they are DVA. They have a valuation adjustment. So this bank treasury would have two options. Either they will go to interbank, which is most common, most which is most common, because banks are generally going to interbank market to raise the money, or they can go to their subsidiary interbank. These subsidiary interbank would always have their interbank valuation adjustment. These valuation adjustments are complied with respect to Basel III. The list I already told you, which is CVA, which is DVA, which is FVA, which we are discussing, which is marginal value adjustment, capital valuation adjustment, COLVA, OIS, overnight index swaps, and this and respective. This is how the funding valuation value valuation adjustment will go. Unfortunately, India is not on the Basel three, so all the companies, those who are taking the derivative instrument, they are only subject to CVA and DVA. For a counterparty, it is a CVA. For a bank, this is a DVA, which is a derivative, which is a which is a debit valuation valuation adjustment, which is a mirror image. But all the biggest banks, those who are outside India, like in Singapore, London, New York, Luxembourg, Frankfurt, and all, they are subject to FVA also. Because if you are funding somebody, if you are doing a kind of derivative contracting, then you need a fund for that because you need to set aside eight percent. You need to set a, set aside eight percent. That is KVA, capital valuation adjustment. But from where you will get the capital? Either you will get the capital from your own internal internal accruals, or either you will get the capital uh, from the market. We know that how banks are shaped right now. All the banks are facing a lot of heat. Your UBA, uh, your government has has said to their I bankers that they do not they, they should not expect bonus this year. Bank of America is firing people. Here in India, banks are firing people. So there are a lot of stuff which is happening. So we know how banks are say, shaped. So in this capital value valuation adjustment and collateralized valuation and funding value valuation adjustment will act, will act very swiftly. And this would add up to the cost which a particular company is, is taking in the debit side of the PNL on a respective derivative instrument. And that cost matters. That cost matters. Technically, FVA can be divided into three parts, FVA cost, FVA buffer, and FVA benefit, and FVA buffer. These together will reduce derivative cost, and this will increase derivative cost. 
this is what we have today for for funding valuation for for funding valuation uh, adjustment believe me that when in 2018 india will uh, have uh, ifrs then it's going to be a big issue because all such things there is no infrastructure we have in india there is no there is nothing which we have in india which can support the cva which we can support and dva like in case of cva majority of the banks cds is not getting traded in the international market taking an example of yes bank indusin bank kotak mahindra bank all such banks cds are not getting traded in the market so what they are doing they are running cva on a proxy cds this is what it is happening so if today a bank is hedging a derivative instrument whose cds is not getting traded uh, basically whose uh, cds is not getting traded traded in, in the market or suppose they are dealing with an another interbank market suppose hdfc bank is dealing with indusin bank and indusin bank do not have any cds which is getting traded in the international market or bank of baroda or union bank of india state bank of india would have a cds how liquid is their cds we we we, we very well understand then how do you calculate the cva which is credit valuation adjustment so similarly such kind of these say scenes will happen because currently you do not have a collateralized market there are limited company we have in india those who are issuing those who have isda in the books and even if they have isda in the books they are they are i know majority companies who do not have the csx in the books so a lot of things will matter and also the interaction between the bank treasury and the interbank treasury which is happens to ltp which is liquidity transfer pricing this ltp is is completely unknown we have a, we have in india so once in 2018 ifrs will come things will surely matter and these val valuation adjustment will start playing the role this is for today in case you have any requirement in ifrs 9 implementation you are welcome to conduct welcome to welcome to connect with us we are doing several courses in ifrs in fact today we are launching a dedicated course on ifrs 9 including modeling that would be available on, on our website and i'm also very pleased to share that uh the youtube channel on which you are watching this video is very soon would be a part of mcn which is multi channel network we are in touch with few companies and they wanted to be in touch with us in fact we are very soon joining mcn also which is multi channel network and how this would shape up we will continue to let you know don't forget that we are coming up uh, with our fixed income channel and that fixed income channel fixed income portal now would have fame also so there are many things which are happening on the treasury consulting side if you have any requirement on the training and the consulting do let us know so our website is www.treasuryconsulting.in our mobile my mobile number is 9892429780 my skype id is rahul5327 my email is rahul.magan@treasuryconsulting.in thank you and have a wonderful time ahead